if you sift through the sand long enough, you will discover that trumpet snails are the master race. Wait, they really touch it in this Charlie Brown Christmas tree. The shrimp needs some nicotine. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to our talk show. Hey guys, so welcome back. As you can see, Hope's Aquarium is looking awesome. And uh, as you can tell, I Hope has been around me recently. I don't know how you'd be able to figure that out. So today, what we're doing, <laughs> we're carrying on from part one in this part two, and we're going to be setting up uh, that 10 gallon aquarium over there so that we can transition everything from this 10 gallon into that one. As we discussed in the previous video, link right there, I think, maybe. The problem that we're having with this aquarium is that the snails are breeding out of control. There's possible anaerobic bacterial no, there problems. Is bacteria. I, when I water changed this today, I. <laughs> Sorry, you go. <laughs> There's definitely anaerobic bacteria in this tank that could be causing nitrogen gas poisoning problems. And then uh, a leak in the tank is also a possibility. It's just a very old 10 gallon that's seen a lot of different Kijiji transfers. So let's get to the first part of setting up this new 10 gallon. Hey guys, so welcome back to a new update. As you can see here, it's been a little bit of time since the last update on this aquarium switchover, but everything is now switched over. The 10 gallon, I guess, is drying out. The old one, I haven't seen it, but um, chucked out a window. <laughs> <laughs> it's drying out. It's drying out in the garage. side of the window. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we've got plants in here. We've got the shrimp in here. We've got the fish in here. Hope's been working on it for the most part. So I'm going to ask what's kind of been the process with it. Uh, How was the process of moving all the living things over to the new tank? Well, as you can see, swimming around in the background, the lamp eye and the Remember tetras the yeah. are just fine. Uh, they're having a grand old time. The shrimp not so much we moved over i want to say like 60 shrimp mm. like babies included there were oh, yeah. so yeah. many and when they were in the bag i don't know if you ever got a video but they were oh, yeah. like yeah i got a video they were they're like piled on top they, of each yeah, other yeah. yeah they didn't it didn't even look like real shrimp it just looked like a bag of eyeballs i don't know <laughs> but <laughs> there were a lot of them and unfortunately the day after i set this tank up I came down and it was kind of like a shrimp cemetery. Um, a lot, a lot, a lot, like the majority of them died. And we think it's just because it stressed them out so much. Moving to a new environment that has not been as established as the other one was. Cause this one's very yeah. new. But the other guys are completely fine. Um, and actually when we were moving the shrimp over, we saw, what did you call it? A dragonfly? There's a dragonfly nymph, yeah. There's been a couple of weird creatures in your aquarium mm -hmm. as we've been moving it over. Yeah, we found a lot of weird living things. Some good, some not so good. There are some still alive, so hopefully we get some shots of them later. But we did see the dra the damselfly nymph, which was pretty cool. And we saw some, what were they? Some sort of seed shrimp, copepods, something oh, like that. Oh, uh, we called them... S Scuds, they're called. Uh, these little kind of ball shrimp thing uh, that kind of eats baby shrimp, but I don't think it ate shrimp to the point of this. It's cool to have the diversity in there. Hopefully it can gain stability with all the different life forms in there. And speaking of life, you've also got some plant life in there. How's that going? Half of them, well, we got three kinds and we also have the moss. The moss is doing just fine. The hornwort completely just shed. <laughs> it's like that tree in Charlie Brown where they touch. 
that's what the horn wart looked like at the end. Um, so it's it's gone. It was past the point of revival. But the like shaggy one. The shay Ludwigia. Yeah, it's like a needle leaf Ludwigia. It's pretty cool. And the money wart is not doing that well, but there's some new growth on it. And then mm -hmm. the third type of plant, I don't know what it's called. Uh, some kind of cryptocorian, I think. Now that we're getting back into plants, we need to start thinking about how do we trim these things? How do we maintain? What are their nutrient needs and light needs and stuff like that? So we'll figure that out and hopefully it bounces back with a lot of these plants because I think it could look really cool in this 10 gallon to have it very densely planted. And we do have some fertilizer still. We do. Are you using it much? Yeah. yeah. Every time I do a water change. Okay, so we moved the camera because my arm was hurting. The issues that we solved with this switchover with the tank is there's no more bacteria issue. Anything with sand, really. I, I think everything was a sand-related issue because, yep. uh, first of all, vacuuming it is difficult. Mm -hmm. um, harbors uh, anaerobic bacteria, which is harmful for fish. Harbors trumpet snails, which are harmful for our mental health. <laughs> And I guess non-sand related is Hope's tank was leaking. So this is a brand new tank. I think, how old was the other tank? It was 15 years old. It was 15 old. years old. That's insane. And it was still running okay. <laughs> but it, I, yeah, like it's cool that it's been through so many phases. And it kind of ended off with a shrimp boom. So yeah. So obviously the big issue with this switchover is most of the shrimp died. Hopefully some survive. At this point, it's on the side of hopefully some survive instead of... And eh, some died. So our recommendation is when you're moving uh, fish or shrimp, especially from one tank to another, make sure that new tank is cycled really, really well. It's going to be annoying having multiple or one extra aquarium than you wanted in your house, but it's going to do, it's going to mean that your fish and your shrimp and everything does a lot better in the new environment than if you had put them in in under a week or whatever we did so i wouldn't recommend doing that they say that shrimp need to be slowly adjusted to a new aquarium like drip acclimation i don't know if that's true in fact i don't think that it is but what i would say is make sure that with shrimp the aquarium is firmly established i mean we moved we moved my shrimp in the 10 gallon in a car with like a tenth of the water left into this house and all of them survived mm -hmm. because it was cycled but we moved them into a fully set up aquarium that wasn't cycled and almost none of them survived. So it shows you what the shrimp really need. So now that it is moved over and everything is kind of settled again as much as it can be, what are your plans for the future of this aquarium? I mean, we talked about maybe putting the coolie loaches back, but they might be disturbed by the gravel. I did have them in the 40 gallon aquarium for about a year before I moved them out of sand. I think that they like the sand a lot, but then again, I didn't have any issues with them on gravel. Their barbells didn't seem to cut or anything like that, and this gravel doesn't seem that sharp. It looks pretty smoothed out. As long as they have enough hiding spots, I think they'll be okay. It's hard getting used to an aquarium that has no shrimp running around constantly, and like me just being like, whoa, there's a new color today. So it's a little bit weird being readjusted to like just the fish in there. I don't know if I'd necessarily want to try shrimp again, but like if the ones in there do survive and they do do well, then I'm fine with that. And the cool thing is, it's the rarer ones that did survive. Yeah. So the white ones, the clear ones, uh, sadly, are not around anymore. But all the reddish brown ones are still the kicking. Ones with so like, thick stripes down their back. Yeah. What did you call them? School bus shrimp. School bus shrimp. Yeah. <laughs> what about uh, new fish? I don't know. I like. If anything, I'd maybe want more lampi. It is kind of weird having four lampi and four tetras. I don't know why, I just feel like I don't like how equal it is. <laughs> yeah, one of them needs to be the bigger school. Exactly, yeah. and then the other ones are just like sprinkled in, but that's more of a technicality. I don't know, I like having only two kinds of fish in there, that, and they contrast each other really well. Blue and orange are complementary colors, you know, in case y'all know the color wheel. Put it right here, Matt. I will. <laughs> color wheel, anyway. Blue and orange are complementary, so they look really good together because their bright blue eyes just kind of pop against the orange. Mm -hmm. um, and I really like the idea of having a lot of plants just kind of overtaking the whole thing eventually. I still like the idea of a sparkling garami. I think it would be a cool new behavior in the tank, but yeah. if you want the shrimp back, it might hurt that population. Yeah, well, we'll see what happens with the shrimp first. Give it time. Mm -hmm. I'm not in any rush. If there's one takeaway we want you guys to take away, <laughs> it's that you need to be patient with aquariums. Uh -huh. So if you want to add a new fish in, 
see how well the old fish are going to adapt, especially if you're putting them in a new aquarium. Make sure you're familiar with all those behaviors and all those, those uh, nutrition needs, all those different specificities of that fish before you move on to the next one. In other words, do what Hope's doing, not what I do. If you guys enjoyed that video, make sure you leave a like so that we know that you liked it. If you wanna see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe. And either you guys just saw a cinematic or you're about to see one. I hope you guys enjoy it, or did. And we will see you guys next Sunday.